let's get into the matter, where, uh, the reasons why we, we invited you tonight. Well, um, part of it is the promise you made right here in that same chair about the ease of obtaining international passport of, uh, uh, in uh, the Nigerian green international passport. Now, you promised that there will be an online portal. Well, not as though there hasn't been before. There has been, people can actually go online to do this, but there's always a human contact. What did you launch today and what is the difference? Well, thank you very much. Um, um, Nigerians, I want to say good evening once again. And you know, let me thank you for the opportunity of coming here to, I mean, we had fixed today as the launch date and it's so, so sad for me that on a day like this, a day we should be celebrating, a day that we should be um, initiating a new, um, a, a new, a new, shattering new grounds. It's a day that uh, this, distract, this news, I mean, has come to. But it's okay. Uh, we are public officers, and uh, we have to know that at every point in time, we are answerable to the people. Having said that, what we've launched today is a scenario whereby we'll be able to minimize the passport application process. As I told you, um, I was on this show. I promised then that two weeks we're going to clear the backlog. Unfortunately, it took us three weeks, of which I apologized. And I came again and I said that on January 8th that we were going to um, automate uh, the application process. And of course, that we have been able to do. That's the website of Nigeria Immigration Service. And from what you can see on, the, on this now, so things that we have been able to do is to be able to make sure that all our breeder documents, you don't need to come to an immigration office with breeder documents. Because what we realize is that some people, some little percentage though of um, corrupt officers try to make use of opportunity, of, um, uh, of authenticity to be able to create a bit of issues, you know, for Nigerians. So what we have been able to do is to automate. As you can see, once you get into the immigration website, you just go on passport, which is up, you apply now. So once you apply on the, the passport, this is it, apply now. So if you are asking for a fresh passport, you go straight to a fresh passport. If it's for renewal, you go to renewal. But let me start with a fresh passport, per se. Now, the first thing it asks you is need. Remember I spoke here on this show mm -hmm. that we're going to... Uh, the, uh, what they call data convergence, that we want a single point of contact for our data, and we must be able to build identity database around NIMSI, which is what the law says in which way. So now... You so is there a handshake between the immigration... 100%. So as soon as you put a name here, if, yeah. I, if my data... That, you'll see it, you'll see it now. Okay. So this is the first page. So you enter your name number. Once you enter your, your name number, immediately you enter the name number, you see it now. This is just like a test name... Um, it's a test environment. This, yes, but it's live as we speak. Now. Okay. The the so is, anyone can go on to it. It's the immigration.com. Immigration.gov.ng. Okay. You know, but this is the we use because we can't be using somebody's real name, you know, uh, yeah. on live TV yeah, because of data. Yeah. Yes. So you enter your date of birth. The reason for the date of birth is basically to be able to authenticate the the name to be sure that you are actually the owner of the name. Then, of course, there's a capture there just to be sure that it's not a security feature. A security feature that uh, it's actually uh, so. You go to verify. Once you once you go to verify, it brings out all your details, pulls it out automatically from from from, from, from the NIMSI. Yes, this the this the record you have in NIMSI. So what we have been able to do now is to make sure that identity theft becomes a thing of the past. What we have been able to do is that you can't have one record in NIMSI and have another one in immigration service. So immediately this letter comes, uh, this document comes out, all your details in NIMSI. Then you confirm and continue if it is true. If it is not true, then you have to go and amend it with NIMSI. Then you choose the type of passport that you want to apply for. I mean, you choose uh, your processing state, sorry. Okay. So maybe I'll pick Abia for, an, for example. Now you pick Abia. Then it brings you the processing office that we have in Abia, drop down. So you, you pick that in Abia, Umahia. And as well, you can check your appointment availability at the center from the beginning. That's just for the purpose of only biometric that shouldn't take you three minutes. Mm -hmm. So you look at, okay, is it available or not? So you will be able to do that. It tells you, okay, next availability is January 9 in Abia. So you will know that, okay, can I go or whatever? But, but those are those because there was a time that when you pick a date, Mm. It gives you almost a year. No, that's not, we're, we're solving that. I'll, I'll take you, but that's part of the reason things in the interim. Now, so I go back here, 
Then your booklet type, do you want the 32 pages? Or the purpose of let's do 32 pages, or let's do 64 pages, for example. Let's do 64 pages. Then you choose the validity period. It's that statutorily 10 years. Okay. It's 10 years, so you do 10 years then. Of course, you confirm that uh, you check the av availability, because if that means if the availability is not okay by you, you can go to another center, pick a near, a okay. nearest center and whatever. Then, of course, it comes to this place. So before, we used to go to immigration office, oh yeah, move your neck, move your this. Then, of course, the snap picture, most times that has shadows, and that, that's part of the thing that wastes time, you know, and also consumes space. So that does not give us enough room to even install our Isla printer machines because we need to procure more printing machines to be able to pro, uh, pro Use the, the passport. So you just go to upload of um, of uh, the passport. The pass yes, the photograph. Yes, yeah, that's the passport photograph. So you go there. Once you go there, you just be able to upload um, a passport uh, a passport photograph, which is the same passport photograph, the same type yeah. that you use for your visa applications, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. So it's the same thing exactly. Okay. So that's what you would do. So you go to upload. Once you upload um, your passport, well, this is an, a test case, for example. Okay. Then you, of course, you submit. You go to submit. This looks like the U.S. visa exactly. kind of exactly. environment. Exactly. Just as friendly as that. That's what we're trying to do. Then, of course, you see that it's okay. It tells you because this system has um, a detector. If the passport is not okay, it tells you it's not okay. If it's okay, it tells you it's okay. So if you need to, in line with ICAO standard, you know, which is the global... Standard. standard of passport that will be done. So you go to continue after this, then it tells, gives you, of course, your reference number in case you want at this stage, you want to log out, come back and feel or whatever. You can always continue. You don't need to start all over again. So you confirm that you have copied the reference number, then automatically it has already populated. If you don't mind sharing, if I may stand. Oh, you will sorry, just a moment. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, so, you, you can stand for a moment. Okay. My, yeah. I'll, I'll allow so, my guys okay. to, to come. So to, now when you look at it, we have made sure that some titles are not, you can't adjust some titles on okay. this place. Yeah. Because this is to be able to prevent identity theft, uh, theft identity okay. fraud. Yeah. You know? So for instance, now, if you are applying for a fresh passport, mm -hmm. not for a change of data, your name is your name. Mm -hmm. you know? If you want to change your name, then yes. you apply for a change of data. Then your date of birth is your date of birth. Your gender is your gender. Mm -hmm. you know? So your place of birth is your place of birth. It cannot change. So your country of birth, it's your country of birth. So this is to make sure that there's harmonization. So there are some areas. For instance, marital status, you can always... Right. Marital status is something that you can always... Uh, marital status is what you can always uh, uh, um, adjust. Then, of course, occupation, your maiden name, which is optional, email address. So I put in my email address because the issue here is that if the email, if mm -hmm. your application yeah. at any point in time has a problem, we send you an automatic, mm -hmm. uh, we send you an automated uh, text message okay. telling you to check your mail mm -hmm. that there is a problem. You know, you check your mail immediately, and I send you. Um, email of which automatically, automatically okay. yes. so that's once they review it at the end and there are questions or there are issues so they send it to you they tell you what to do mm -hmm. then you are able to redo those things and once you redo those things then it automatically updates your your, your uh, data is, yes automatically yeah. it does that so that's so after feeling that what you are, sorry apologies yeah. what about those who have issues with their data that is already on NIMSIS their NIN, because there are some people who have issues with some of the, the data, they like to correct it and all. Would you have to first go to NIN, yeah. I mean to NIMSI, to correct that? No, definitely, because don't forget that NIMSI Act is very clear. NIMSI is responsible for management of identity in Nigeria. That's the truth. So you correct it, you do modification in NIMSI, then we have a handshake with NIMSI. So what we are trying to do is that every identity has to be Uniform. It has to be one. We don't want a scenario whereby your driver's license, for example, you are 1982. In your passport, on your passport, you are 1978. In, uh, what is it called, in NIMSI, you are 1984. You know, we don't want that. We want to harmonize our data and be sure of the integrity of the system. So you fill this, then the next thing you do is just continue. You go on um, continue. So once you get to this point, it has automatically filled your state of origin, because that cannot change. Your hometown, of course, you feel your hometown, you just feel 
some few things. So, I mean, one of the major things for a lot of Nigerians is the time lag. They, yeah. the, the, the time for you to wait for days, for you to go there, the queues that you make. Sometimes if you want to do your pa international passport, you have to jettison work on that day. And that's what you have to go and queue. And that's what we're trying. And there are a lot of people who are there at the immigration passport office who are there to collect money from you. That is exactly what we're trying to stop. And with this now, the only thing you need to do there is you have an appointment, you just go there, take your biometric, no picture, nobody's looking at your document, nothing. So it's just to take your fingerprint and go. Two, three minutes? You so you're saying that nobody should ask any Nigerian no, 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 for extra no. money apart no, no, no. from the money that, that is, you, are to, you, are, you officially no, no, pay? No. Of yeah. course, definitely. You, you, in fact, it will be, will be frustrated if Nigerians continue to patronize these people. Because, I mean, um, we have automated the system such that Nigerians do not need Will arrest. there come a time that we do not actually have to go to the passport that's, that's the, You see, the whole solution is almost ready. I mean, we have phase one, phase two, phase three. This is phase one that we have delivered, and I'll show you to the end. Phase okay. two is the one in diaspora. Phase three, which takes, the one in diaspora will be February 8th. Then phase three is the, is the contactless biometric whereby you don't even need to go again. And that is March 8th. We don't want to chalk, we don't want to shock the system okay. with too many things at the same time. Let Nigeria so there, get there, used there will to come it. a time no, that definitely in the you next sit month. in your house, you can do so your biometrics. I guarantee you in two months' time, you sit at home, you do your biometrics, you fill your delivery address, we DHL it to you. We send it to you by courier. That at the end point. of March. That is a promise. Not end of March, March 8th. March 8th. That will be ready. It's a promise. Nigerians write it down. It is, I have made two, three promises on this show because I understand the president. The president is a man that is driven by performance. The president has given us a machine order. Go and make impact. Go and make renewed hope a reality. Go and be good and be wonderful ambassadors of renewed hope. We all signed a bond. We all signed a contract with Mr. President in terms of delivery. And we are, and Ministry of Interior is poised, was delivering on every promise that we make. So now going back here, then you go to continue after filling, after filling this. And the next thing you do is, of course, your nest of kin. You know, just fill your nest of kin because we decided that nest of kin can change. Okay. You know, so that's why we decided that today your nest of kin might be your mother, tomorrow might be your wife, might be your daughter, it might be your so We decided that, okay, you fill the details of your nest of kin. And um, once you fill the details of your nest of kin, the phone number, then obviously it takes you, that one will not take you to the last stage, you know, which is for you to upload your supporting document. These are okay. documents that he said to people used to okay. take to um, immigration Office, offices yeah. and an immigration officer, we have to say, oh, this one is Jenny, this one is, well, this is another wonderful thing that we have been able to do. And I'll show you, once you upload this document, now the automation we have done is not just at the front end. Mm -hmm. We have auto also automated the back end of Nigerian immigration service. So even review of the, all these applications, mm -hmm. review of the application, the whole uh, what's it called approval uh, query, everything is now online by immigration. What it helps me to do is that there's an audit trail. So if you do, if you if you approve a passport today to be issued. In 20 years' time, I know who approved it because it's, I can query it on the Just system. like the banks would do. Just you exactly. have your, 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 ba your banker uh, attached to you. Exactly. In case you have any so, issues. Exactly. So that's what we have been able you know, to do. And also, you have to also understand that what we have also introduced is what we call the DVOs. Because the president is so bothered about the integrity of our data integrity of our passport, you know, there is this notion that maybe some non-Nigerians, maybe, quote and unquote, or, you know, are heavy allegations that yes, a lot that of times that they acquire, those from our neighboring countries, countries, they acquire Nigerian passports. Nigerian passport, Nigeria passport so. was too easy to, to get. get. So what we are doing, what we have done here, why making it more comfortable, why making it more convenient for Nigerians? We have also done our best to introduce what we call the document verification officers. So in all local governments now. So every doc the document that you upload here, they will be verified. That's so there, there is a statutory immigration officer in, F in the seven seven local seven local seven government, seven yes. local government and they areas. are called document verification officers. So what we do, for instance, on local government certificate of indigenship, once you upload, we are not sending them the entire document. 
All we are sending them is just to send them the reference number mm -hmm. and obviously the date of issue. We expect them to send us the details of it. That we make that is a way to ensure that they actually go do the verification. So it is only when they verify your indigenship and your documents that NIS will be able to approve it. This for a fresh applicant is supposed to not to take more than seven days. Okay. For us to be able to do this, because we already have immigration officers in every local. World. This reason for this is to ensure that every anybody that carries the Nigerian passport is actually a Nigerian, Nigerian that deserves to carry it. And there is no way at the moment. What we used to do was we bring your passport, your document. We just look at it. Oh, the indigenship is there. Oh, yeah, we think. But how are we sure it's authentic? How are we sure it's not fake? Mm -hmm. So what we have, and I believe that it is only the issue of a document that can attest to its authenticity. Yeah. So that's how, why now every document that is here, we will verify. Gone are the days when anybody will just bring fake and know that, oh, that's it. If you bring fake, we will get you, we will prosecute you, and we will make sure that you face the full wrath of the law. Mm -hmm. That is, so once you do this, then the next thing is that you continue. Once you, once you do this, um, you continue once it's okay, then it gives you uh, full it, details, it's full of, details your... of your application. Mm -hmm. That is it. So at every point in time, you can view what you have. You can view the uh, the documents that you submitted to see maybe it's right. You can look at it. That is that. Then you know you can always view it. You can whatever. So after this one, you just confirm. You pay your money, get and go for your biometric. Which now because now when you go for biometric, no officer. Is looking at you to say, where's your document? Oh, this document, nowhere. Uh, or God said to. All those things does not happen again. So once you go there, you have your number, you just go, they take your biometric. So this and brings us to the end of this That's process. The so the application process marks, you're not taking more than five minutes. Hmm. So now, this is for new, for, for the new, for new application, but yeah. for people that are trying to for renewal, renewal. Yeah. you know you just go to renewal here and takes so you pr pretty much the same process you know, pretty, pretty much the same thing so once it gives you this then obviously you can renew but for now we are asking people to still bring their edg ship then you upload okay let me show you a bit of renewal now okay. so let's enter the name for example this is quite uh, important once you enter your name um your data back it pulls out your data mm -hmm. and it pulls out, it pulls out your data from NIMSI. So okay. we are in. We, there's an API now with NIMSI. So we're integrated with NIMSI. So, so there's a handshake. There's so. handshake, hundred percent. So the, any document you get from immigration is what you will get from. Yes, verify. You can verify. So is what you get from NIMSI. So it gives you all this just like you've seen before. Then no, just go to the next. Conf continue. Just confirm and continue. So. Now, it will ask you for your current passport number. Okay. So immediately it goes to the, please enter the, pass, uh, the passport number. So it, it asks you for your present passport number. So it goes to our database, in, that's the NIS database, and pulls out your data and puts it side by side with, the, with NIMSI to mm -hmm. be sure that like you are the, you are the exactly, same and uh, these are just control uh, measures that we've been able to put. So th this one now, it goes directly. So you see what it tells you? Yeah. So it tells your data, this is a data match. This person is the same person. What the, the data on your current passport says your name is John, is John. So it looks so at it. Compares it, it, it compares it. So if there is no, if it doesn't match, mm -hmm. it tells you to go and it tells you to go and apply for a change of data. You cannot go forward. So all other processes are almost um, Minister. The Then the good thing I okay. need to say again yeah. is that when you go to the change of data, what we have been able to do now is to stop anybody from coming to Abuja for change of data. Nobody. It's mm -hmm. not just about marriage. Whether you're married or anybody. You, 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 don't need, you don't need to come to. All you do is just the same process. You, you uh, enter, enter your, your name, name. Then it brings out your... Because if you want to change your data, it means you are actually asking for a re, reissue. So there are certain documents, depending on your particular, uh, peculiar situation, that you have to... Um, upload, you know, within the within the system. So once this is done, you understand. Then wherever you are, all you need to do. Uh, but the key issue for change of data is that we always say this: it's not our responsibility to to change your about your data, identity data. It's NIMSI's responsibility. Okay, so that also has to be done at, at NIMSI. At, yes, at NIMSI, and immediately it's done at NIMSI. It synchronizes with our system. <laughs> right here. Yes, 
It's so with our what, what, what major minister. problem that I have, Honorable Minister, we got a lot of people who are watching tonight and some of their queries as to whether they can actually, uh, you know, reach out to, uh, uh, to immigration yeah. and get uh, their queries. Because a lot of people at some point will say, oh, they, they have an issue, they have this problem, and they wanted to check with... Uh, uh, with uh, with immigration, they have this issue. They've applied, but nobody is listening to them. Nobody has answered them. Uh, we understand that you now have uh, a customer service line. Yeah, is it live now? No, no, it is. It is. is it working now? Yeah, it is. What working. is the commerce? part of what we did? Let me tell you before we even go to to the line is that um, I sincerely believe that customer services are the center of any user experience. That's the truth. You must give people that effective customer service, <coughs> and you must be able, people must be able to have this feel that this is our thing. You know, there must be that sense of ownership. So part of what we have been able to do is to set up an EPMS already, which is a technical back-end solution that will be able to, um, what they call, do a lot of things that we used to outsource. Part of the complaint people will tell you is that, oh, they used to wait for a particular vendor to approve certain levels of um, alterations or certain things. We're taking that away and handing it over to the NIS. So we created an EPMS, which is a technical solution. Then two, we've now created what we call a help desk, which is a call center. And we've been able to integrate into this system. So at any point in time um, that you need, uh, uh, what they called, we'll display it before we go on the, we'll display it uh, on, the, on the monitor. Mm -hmm. So that you people can call and it's 24 hours. All right. Let's, let's go on a break, Honorable Minister. Uh, we'll come and conclude. We want to hear the help desk. Does it work? We will test it right here on the program before, before we allow you to go, Honorable Minister. Let's take a break, everyone. But while we come back, so much more on the program. Um, my final moment with the Honorable Minister for Interior. And of course, at the end of the day, I have those who will dissect the major topic today on the program with us. We'll be right back, everyone. Our closing moment now with the Honorable Minister for Interior, Honorable Olumome Tunje. There are so much questions a lot of Nigerians need to ask, and they are asking questions about data integrity, uh, the breach of, uh, of of this process of this particular website. How can they trust? Because this perhaps is one of the only government agencies that you can point at that is gone this far in in getting public service delivered to Nigerians. But one important thing for me is whether or not there is any, because the question is that you have a problem and there's nobody to talk to, nobody to call in delivering service. So you talked about um, app desk number. Do we have it? Yes. Does it, does it work? Yes, I'm just giving you the help desk number. Okay, Let, yeah. let's try to, to call the number. Yes, if the app desk number works, we can put it right on the screen. Yes, let's I, test I want, whether or not it I, works. I want it to, and All of right. course the email for customer services, the email the, of the, on the website. Is it 24-7? It's 24-7. There are people, we have about, we have officers that are really 24-7. They are there. That's part of what we've been able to do. We we'll set up systems for them. That is the, the email, I mean, the, what's it called, the complaint, uh, what's it called, support at, and uh, that's uh, NI Savicom. For at, different uh, yes, uh, for services. Different, but for the help desk, for the help center, I've just given you the number which you can. Uh, yeah, that, they're call, putting up yeah. now. They're, and if you, know, if you want me to call it for you, you can call, call it out so that Nigerians can also Nigerians have it. So will have the, the number. Sorry, I don't, I have to. All right, so it's right there for anyone who is watching right now. You can look at the app desk number in case you have any issue with your passport issuance, uh, with your renewal, with your date, and all what have you. They said they've launched it. If you have any problems, since it's almost contactless now, who can you talk to because you become so helpless? The help desk number is 091 219 Absolutely. Yes, that's so we'll, we'll get to be able to talk to one of your MDX yeah. person and let's see whether or not this works. But Sean, one thing I want to assure Nigerians is this: it's about swift experience, it's about renewed hope. Please take this to the bank. 
we have the whole solution ready. It's not just about immigration service. As I said on this show, I don't want to be remembered as Minister of Immigration. I want to be remembered as a minister under the tutelage of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, saddled with the responsibility of Ministry of Interior. Later on, we'll come to this show and tell you what we're doing in the fire service. You will see the first year one fire academy in West Africa. In Shedda is what we are putting in place. The chair with the first year one in the entire West Africa. You see what we are trying to build there. You see how we are trying to create about two, three million jobs from the fire service by turning the fire service from an, from just an operator but to a regulator, and where the, the private sector can leverage on opportunities to create jobs and opportunities. So you will see what we are doing in that regard, and you see what we are trying to do in the Nigeria Correctional Center very soon with the way we are innovating. And I can give you a good news. Just yesterday, the state. Uh, the the, the uh, country director of UNODC sent me a mail that, of course, the international bodies now collaborating with us on this issue of prison reforms, especially on our inmate audit that we are trying to do to be able to audit all our correctional centers and ensure that the people that are in correctional centers are people that are ordinarily meant to be in correctional centers. So there are a lot of things that we are trying to do. But for the passport scheme, I tell you, this solution I've just we've just shown you is for now is for Nigeria. By February 8th, the solution we will unveil that of the diaspora. Then by March 8th, as I said, no every Nigerian will have an immigration office on their phones. That is the target. No more human contact in terms of that. And by that March 8th, mm. my brother, we will invite you to the Inam Diaziku International Airport. We will we'll tell you to tell your correspondents to go to all international airports in Nigeria. The e-gate will be live and direct, where Nigerians will be able to come into the country without any uh, interaction with uh, immigration officers, unless they are pe persons of um, interest. So we are transforming the whole project. When you go to the immigration center, you will see the command and control center that is presently going on there. It's a massive right. world-class project that we're trying to do. But the help desk, as I said, all these services, no matter how well we deliver, we have to ensure that user experience is key. We have to make sure that Nigerians can actually seek help when they need help. Right. And that's why there's this help desk. And about what you said about data integrity and security, Shio, I am an IT professional to the core. I'm a certified ethical hacker. I am an IT security expert. So it is at the center of whatever we do. Nigerians can be sure of the integrity of their data and is much spoken about single point of contact of data harmonization is finding fulfillment starting with Ministry of Interior. And hopefully from, from NIS, the, um, NIMSI will be in charge of identity management all over Nigeria, and Nigeria can boast of having just a unified database for identity management. I wanted to test that number, but it seems that a lot of Nigerians, as soon as that number has been displayed, a lot of them are engaging the number. The number has been very busy. No, uh, I will love you to call the number. <laughs> I want to call yeah. the number, but the number has been engaged. I've been trying to reach the number, but it's been engaged. But, on a but what we're that, also trying to do mm -hmm. is to be able to route it, to be able to uh, have like about 10 different Helplines, help yes, and uh, whatever to be able to create, um, you know, multiple lines. Multiple lines. We are trying so to do that exactly. Do that. So we are already we are we're trying. We have told them to we're initiating talk with NCC to be able to have probably a two free line, or uh, you know, to be able to. So we are working on that. But right. for now, this is what Minister. we we have, yeah. and we will love you to call the number and, we, we and we testify to the sweet experience <laughs> of renewed hope. I hope that is actually a sweet one because. I'm still trying, but there's this uh, uh, one last one that I'd like you to, I just have 60 seconds before you go, Honorable Minister. As the owner of the company in which you, you talked about, would you be willing to return, that the company returns the consult consultancy fees which it got in, to, in this uh, contract with the humanitarian uh, 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 ministry, if only to fulfill all righteousness? Chill. Do not drag me into a business that is not mine. I am not the director. I am not in charge of day-to-day -day operation of the company. As I have said, did, did, well, did the company go through the due process? If the answer is a yes, fantastic. If they didn't do it, then government is, I mean, government takes uh, charge of it. I'm not involved. I've not been involved in the affairs of the company in the last five years. 
Is it on me on January 1 when I was busy in immigration headquarters and I was working? You were there with me. Mm. You know what I mean? On Saturday, we were busy working. Even on Sunday, we were working, trying to bring up a sweet experience. So for me, this issue is just a diversion. As far as I'm concerned, it's a non-issue for me. I am not a director in the company. Right. And let if the company is found wanting, then definitely the law will take its cup. But as far as I'm concerned... Mm. I am a different entity from the company. And as of today, I am not an officer of the company, but I am an officer and minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, courtesy of the magnanimity minister. of Mr. President Bola Tinobu. Olubo Metunjo, your minister of interior, thank you so much indeed. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure.